to make making 3D content for any type of application much easier than traditional methods. Um, what we're also trying to do is make it so that you can have content which is instantly rendered, there's no render time wait, and that content can contain live elements such as live video feed mapped to any texture or elements which actually change dependent on RSS and other database or multicast data feed coming into the computer in real time. So for example you can create simulations or even uh, animated uh, weather presentations with mixed advertising in which the advertising content prices offers that text data as 3D text can change instantly and to be able to create that content using a, um, a standardized object model in which you simply um, enable or disable elements of each object to create a complex scene. In the current version of Viewpoint 3D software you can now import directly very complex models of hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes um, directly from CAD programs or other 3D programs. What we'll look at here is importing directly importing um, a beautifully detailed jet model uh, produced by Dorsch Design, um, which we will import directly into Viewpoint 3D now, and we will then set materials and set lighting and shadows and create a, uh, a fairly nice looking model. Okay, so here we have the object editor. We can enable MIP mapping, which gives us better quality of textures as we zoom in back and forth or fly animations, uh, trilinear and anisotropic. Uh, filtering which gives uh, better texture image quality at a variety of uh, under a variety of conditions uh, we'll start with uh, lighting and, and shadows off and take a look at the model okay so here's the model uh, we've got the front area which is the cockpit uh, and then we've got the body section now this fits inside another Dorsch model which is the exterior part of the jet um, but first we'll just focus on this area here. So let's uh, turn on lighting. And so now you can see that we've got lighting effects there. And here's the light which we can click on. And we can move the light. And you can see the, the lighting change slightly there as I move that. I won't move that too much because it's positioned. Okay, so the next thing we do is we add shadows. And you can see now we've got a shadow line being cast here. Let's move into the model. Uh, and as you can see, with the lighting enabled, we've got some quite nice detail. If we turn the lighting off, you can see that detail is lost because there's no highlighting. Okay. With Viewpoint 3D, we've made it so that you can click on the sections, which are separate materials, and you'll see up here it actually displays the type of shader applied to that material. If you shift control double click a texture that will then center the, the camera on that particular triangle so you can get a nice uh, control of the viewing. So here we can see the cabin. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, let's just uh, adjust the lighting, light range This is the interior cabin light. And that's just with the external light coming through the windows there. And you can see the shadow cast across the chairs there in the middle background. So let's increase the lighting to a reasonable level. OK, so um, what next? Let's look at uh, the materials. We can basically click on any material. We can then simply navigate to the texture file and when we've got the texture file in this case we're looking for the leather material of these seats it's around here somewhere okay I'll just for example add that for the moment and you should have applied carpet to the seat which isn't really what we're looking for so what I'll do is do it an easier way, which is using the file explorer here. And there's the leather. I'll drag that onto the seat. And so I can quickly start decorating the model with the leather. I 
as I need to. Now the lower part of the seat and the upper inner part are this special type of leather with um, what looks like ventilation holes. We need to make those a little bit more detailed, so we'll replicate, we'll increase the multiplier on that the UVs of that texture. Also on the base, simply multiply that up as a percentage. And you can see that it's starting to look much more realistic. We'll drop in a bit more leather here on the side. This part is wood. Uh, this part here is also wood. Yeah, that's it. And that's also leather. That's leather, I think. And this section here is a dark brown colour, which I've already set up. Okay, the floor here, that strip, I think it's a sort of white metallic. So we'll change the colour. And we'll change it to uh, reflective. Also the legs of the table are reflective. And we're missing the seat there in the background. Okay, now we've got this little strip around the door at the bottom there. So let's change that, say, to a darker type of grey. The If we look at the window here, around the window we have this typical plastic material covering the walls and uh, let's just take a closer look at that see here it's completely flat so it's textureless it's not got any bump mapping so let's add some bump mapping to it just simply by enabling bump and now you can see we've nicely textured it glass bump okay leave it at that and now that, well, the way that works simply is you have the texture with the texture, colour or material and further in on the textures we've got another array of elements, textures such as this one here which is the bump map for that particular material. Okay. The, the wood here has to have actually um, reflective which means that it will reflect the environment. As you can see, the wood is now looks like it's uh, glazed. So, so there's our interior building up quite quite nicely now. I won't complete the whole model because obviously, um, I think the point here is to show the process rather than actually complete everything. Let's just spin that around a little bit. Okay, and then in the front here we've got uh, the cockpit and the TV screens. So let's see if we can decorate those materials. Not the notebook screen, the TV rear, the TV front, okay. So that's that. We're going to put an image on the TV screen itself. Okay, and if we come around here, looking through the window, let's have a look. That's the back, so we'll put the TV back on goes in there. So we've got the TV running. Now obviously the, the quality of the model, um, but let's just put a couple of screens on the on the cockpit there, drop those in. That looks a little bit more realistic. And the floor is the carpet there, so let's put the carpet down. Okay, so that's that's the model, um, looking quite nice now. So we started off with something which was quite simple, uh, just basically the mesh. And from that we've decorated fairly quickly, we've adjusted the lighting, shadows as you can see here on the carpet area in front. And now let's... Um, Let's put live TV, for example. Hold on, let me turn that off. Onto the television. I've already set up an object, which is just a simple cube. 
and uh, objects that's object 6 here and I've selected a video file here and I just disable it so that will and you can see it's very thin so it's just a like a flat quad across the television and um, I reset that and now we've got TV running there on the screen now that can be live camera feed as well from any camera plugged into the system or a television from a DVB receiver etc etc and of course we can add as many of those streams as we want it will stream up to 4k video at full 4k resolution and at 60 frames a second running on an a10 single chip APU um, on an a4 or a6 this will run quite well although it won't run 4k video um, so there you go that's your your cockpit there coming together nicely we can see the shadowing uh, coming through and um, looking fairly good let's add one more feature quickly uh, which is an object I've got set up at number seven and this is basically text set to face the camera so as I approach the the cockpit there it is flight decks just come up and you see as I move around the text continues to face the camera as we go away it disappears as we come back and there's a variety of effects like zoom out um, fade that you can use to bring up text as you as the camera approaches parts of the model so um, the idea here is to make creating 3d content much easier um, for people who, who perhaps uh, don't have the time to use some of the more complex uh, and advanced software products for creating 3d content uh, but still end up with something with with fairly reasonable quality spinning around here okay so my name is Robin Colclough uh, I'm a software engineer I uh, started off as a telecommunications engineer but ended up getting into software and uh, this is a project that I've been working on for quite a few years now um, you can see the table here if I click it you'll see up here on the left on the toolbars that it's a uh, pixel reflect or fax so it's environmental mapping the laptop on front of it, on top of it here let's just spin around on that you can see it also has a slightly reflective screen we can also pick that model up uh, and move it and place it anywhere we want into the image for positioning with complex models imported from CAD systems um, often the materials aren't separated out um, they are quite easy to separate using software such as Blender which is an excellent program once you've learned to use it um, and basically then you can re-import that into viewpoint and uh, have elements which you can move around and, and manipulate exactly as you need to another thing that viewpoint does is it splits up the model as it loads it so that in real-time rendering it's much much faster uh, and this is quite important because what you don't want is the, having the GPU render enormous meshes where only a fraction or part of that mesh is actually being being shown at any one time let's increase the, the cabin lighting slightly here okay let's increase ambient lighting and let's set okay a slightly emissive light level from the actual model itself okay and once of course you've built the model up you can have live element data in it you can have animated human models walking through you can develop a flight path by dropping waypoints through the model um, and fully animate the scene you can also directly output to uh, uh, the formats for um, uh, what we call uh, well 2d plus depth and auto stereo as you can see here it can render nine views simultaneously and then actually interlace those together to give you the what looks here without a 3d glasses free th screen a slightly blurry image so quite a lot of facilities for real-time use live data um, very very quick rendering etc uh, etc et and um, I think that that basically covers uh, everything for now thanks thanks for listening